my parents, Curtis and Betty McGregor, on DCT Talk Show, Getting to Know You. I'll be interviewing them as they celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary. They consider this a journey of their marriage. And I'm gonna, I would like for them actually to share with you kind of a historical journey. And I'd like to go back to really how they first met. So I think that's really interesting. And I know my mom says she can tell you actually the day they first met. And so I'm going to ask her to describe that day. So mom, tell me about the day you met dad. It was one afternoon after school, uh, high school I should say. We met in high school. And he approached me as I was on my way to catch the bus to go to East Dallas after school. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, can I come see you? Can I take you to a movie? Mm -hmm. And that's how it all began. You see, you don't remember that. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, women don't forget the little things of life, you know. Mm -hmm. The sentimental things and the things that has such a grand meaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was real quiet in school, didn't say much of anything. I had a couple of girlfriends that we hung out together with, but uh, I never looked at boys. Boys was not my interest. Mm -hmm. But evidently I was an attractive young lady. I caught his eye. Uh-huh. So dad, you don't remember that? I sure do. Okay, but so he asked you to a movie. And what high school was that? Lincoln High School. So that was, and at that time, that was the only high school that black people could attend here in Dallas. Is that correct? No, we had two. You had two, and that was actually during that time they opened up a third one. Lincoln High School was the first one. Mm -hmm. It was opened up in 1939, mm -hmm. and we had Booker T. Washington. And later in the 50s. Um, it was called Forest Avenue High School. They, the whites moved out and the blacks moved in and it became James Madison High School. All right. And my class was split at that time. Half of my class had to go to Madison and half of us stayed at Lincoln. Right. I know Dallas has quite a bit of history, I know, with, with the schools. And I know what's really good about that is that you guys, even now, you, they have a very strong reunion and it's nice to see that so many of you all have such a strong reunion and you guys have stuck together so many of you are professional people and I really like to see that I've been a participant in many of your activities and I really like to see that and but now I want you to tell me when you guys got married when did you actually marry what's the date we married March the 6th 1956. And where did you in get in? Curtis's grandmother's living room. Mm -hmm. It's under the arch of the <laughs> dining room and the living room. And that was where, Dad? You tell 2404 me. 2404 Southland Street. Southland Street. And what part of Dallas would that be considered like right now? South Dallas. That's South in South Dallas? Right. Okay. And when you guys married, did you guys wind up living in that home? Where did y'all live when you married? Uh, we lived with Betty's aunt. That was on with Park Road. Mm -hmm. On Park Road. I don't know what the address is. But we stayed there for about a couple of months. Then we moved back with my parents at 2400 South. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was all good. Mm -hmm. And you stayed with your parents for how long? Seven years. So, okay. And after seven years, we moved. 20 Which is right by the church. Right, near wow. the church. Mm -hmm. So for the first seven years, you lived with your parents. My so you lived with your in-laws for seven years. And how did that work out? Wonderful. Good. She Good. was like a mother to me. Not, not the bad mother-in-law that most... Married women talk about. Right. She was a truly good mother to me. And I remember early in the conversation, you you mentioned you said that ideally it worked for you because you were looking for a family, 
And why were you looking for a family? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, growing up, I didn't have a what I call a real family. My mm -hmm. mother died three years after I was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know her. I didn't. I was too young to remember her, really. Right. right. And my father, I didn't meet until I was nine years of age. Mm -hmm. Well, this dream of mine was continuously going, you know, I want to get married, I want to have a family, I want to have two children, I want a boy first, and then I want a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I want this perfect marriage. I have dreamed of this for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Curtis asked me, as soon as he finished high school, he got a job and asked me to marry him, and of course I said yes. Mm -hmm. And that's where it all began. So that was your opportunity to have the family that you that never I, had. Exactly. So, so, so you were going to have to make the family because that family you didn't have in your childhood. Exactly. Okay. So that. And I used to kind of feel sorry for myself at times because my friends would discuss the things that they were doing with their mom and their dad, you know, and I didn't have anything, any reference. Know, Right. I could not participate in that conversation, so I kind of stood offish and kind of felt sorry. You know, Lord, why did this happen to me like this? Or why, why am I left like this? But as I grew older, I matured, and, you know, that, that feel, uh, feeling just kind of flew away. All right. And I felt like I was one of the greatest and most attractive women in the world. Mm-hmm. Where you were. Well, thank you, thank you. You think so, anyway. <laughs> I think Curtis thought so, too. Yeah, you know I did. <laughs> Absolutely. Stayed married to you for more than 60 years, and he's not yeah. going anywhere. Well, well, 60 years of marriage, and we were the high school sweetheart, and that's another two or three years. So we've been together a long, long time. That is correct. More than 60 years. Right. Yeah, more I think we courted, what, three years? About three. Three years before we married. Three years before you married? Okay. But you spoke of uh, the togetherness that we still have with our classmates. Right. And that is truly a true statement. Mm -hmm. There's one couple that married the same year that we married. Mm -hmm. But in the same month, but a few days after we married. And we compare things a lot. She has a Daryl. I've had a Daryl. Oh, okay. Uh, they have two sons. We have two sons, and we're often saying, you know, this is this is unreal. This is this is scary. You know, right. this is I awesome mm -hmm. for us to, you know, for things to fall in place. Parallel. Like they did. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we get together quite often. Mm -hmm. Just doing. And is that couple in this area? Yes. Okay. Have I ever met them? Yes, I have? and some of the oh, okay. functions that you've sang. Oh, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. I think that's great. Really, really good. Yeah. We still don't know how we met. And we're pretty, I'm sure it's at church, right? I don't know. We don't, I know. don't know. Yeah. I just know you were a ghetto girl from Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we don't know. We have we have no idea what our connection was at church. We just know we've met, and whenever we met, we've been together ever since. And so we've been mother and daughter ever since. And um, I'm just good. grateful. And yeah. uh, she's picked up when my mother t died, and um, I'm ever grateful. And I'm the daughter she needed, and she became the mother I needed, and you became the father I didn't have. So, You know, the ironic thing about this is that when we met your mother down at Oakwood one year, mm -hmm. she gave you to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Or I not. do, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like she passed on her daughter to me to share during her lifetime. And when she was gone, then you were mine all by myself. Right. Right. I do. I think, I, you know, I don't know if it was a premonition or or whatever, but I was comfortable with it, you know. I, yeah. um, and, I mean, I, I saw a lot of the same characteristics, and I told you that. So, you know, I, th I think it was, an, in a way, it was a, you know, it was natural. I, I, I felt okay. I was, Good. you know, Good. I was okay. 
you know, when and they I do think, work. I think uh, since it happened the way it did, you know, mm -hmm. we don't remember who said hello to who first, mm -hmm. or where we were when we said hello. Mm -hmm. I think it was just all in God's planning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really right. And, and, and just like you said, you didn't have certain things, you know, in your life. You know, for me it was the father part, you know, in mine. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So so I, it was you so know, we, it was a full we circle both of life. Have benefited from it. Correct. You have a dad and I have a daughter. Correct. And it was yes. You know, it was a full circle for some strange reason. You know, it says people wind up where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be here. That's you true. know. Because I had no reason to be here in Dallas. Literally. Right. right. I remember you telling me you just picked up on your own and left and come to No, Dallas. no, there was no reason for me to be in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I was the reason, now that you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, looking back, you, you, you could say yes. Uh, but I didn't know that at the time. Exactly. You know, what God has in store for us, we don't know. So, let me ask you, to, you guys, what would you say is the secret to this marriage for 60 years? I mean, nowadays, you know, most people don't make it. You know, 50% of most marriages fail. So what's the secret, you guys? What is it? Let me give it to you in one word. Mama. Okay. Love. Just love? Love, baby. Well, when most people get married nowadays, they think they love each other. So, Dad, it's got to be more than that. Come on. Well, it could be. Uh, well, like I said, Ben and I, we was in love. We uh, had some of the same plans. Mm -hmm. So you had goals. Church people. We go, you know, church people. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, it was just being, she being Ben and I'm being Curtis, and that was just it. Mm hmm so we didn't have a whole lot of uh, disturbing in our life. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I say, you know, just having a lot of love. So what about for you, Mom? What do you think? I agree with that, but I see it a little bit differently. Okay. Um, it takes a lot to make a marriage. That's any marriage. Mm -hmm. And I feel that a woman gives and takes a lot more than a man does. Okay. And that's not in a negative way. Okay. It's that a, a female sees things that a male will never see or consider. Okay. And the, the, the wife just makes it happen, you know. Um, and I'm not going to tell you it's easy. There are ups and downs in any marriage, and that's to be expected because it's two different people with two different ideas. But, as Curtis said, if you love each other, you can work through things. And I think that's what we have successfully done. Mm -hmm. So communication. Communication is now, the... Now, in, in your lifetime, you worked some of the time, but a lot of times you were just... You were the homemaker, is that correct? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you did what I was very sometime. fortunate to marry a man that believed in taking care of his family. Mm -hmm. Curtis often, for years, he has worked two jobs mm -hmm. and made life good for his kids and myself. Mm -hmm. And there were times when I'd get bored. I'd go out and find a job. I might not stay on it long, but... Mm -hmm. So it was your choosing? It was my choosing. It was my choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm grateful for that. Uh, there are a lot of couples who struggle, you know, to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. They have to work. They have to work. But I thank Almighty God that I had a choice. You had a choice. Well, let me ask you this, too. When did you come into the church? Because were you guys born into the Seventh-day Adventist church? When did that happen? <coughs> I think I came in about maybe the late 40s. So you were first? First, right. Okay. Was that before you married? Right. 
Okay, so before you were married, you were already in the church. Right. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was late 40. It might have been 49, something like 49 or 48. Okay. And Betty came in after we got married. Okay, so let me, t so how did, what happened? When did you come in? How did that happen? Well, Elder Ward held, held a tent on Myrtle and Hatchet Street. Now, is this, what, is this the ward that was at Oakwood? Mm-hmm. Oh, it is? Okay, mm -hmm. so he was actually the pastor when I was at school there. Oh, okay. Then, okay. Okay. All right. Well, he left your school to come to Dallas and hold a tent effort. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Curtis's mother and aunt every day would encourage me. I'm using that as a nice word. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> to let's go. I want you to come to the tent effort. Okay. So I got so sick and tired of listening to that. I thought I'll go the very first night so they can get off my back. Oh, okay. That tent meeting went on for three months. Ooh, I missed one Sabbath, mm -hmm. and I was too sick to get out of my bed to go. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I could not wait for one Sabbath to the next mm -hmm. to go back to the tent mm -hmm. meeting. And they even started me telling a mission story before I was even baptized. And this was in 1960. That's when I was baptized into the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. So it was under Elder Ward. Mm -hmm. Well, he he held the tent meeting, but Elder Dudley okay. baptized. Yeah, me. I thought it was Dudley was the connection, so I got confused. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought mm -hmm. you said Dud was Dudley. Dudley baptized now, me in the sixties. Now, Dad, I thought, now I thought you guys got introduced to the church through another member. Was that not correct? Wasn't. Was it your well, mom or somebody? How did that actually happen? Let me see. Uh, I believe it was Elder Proctor, I believe, that uh, came in our neighborhood and did a Bible study. And we uh, was brought in after the Bible study. Now, now, would this have been at that original church that I hear them talk about before right. it became the city temple that it right. is today? Right, it was the Beulah Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, okay, so that's the church I hear them talk about so much. I, right. didn't get that. I wish I'd have had that experience right. of that church. the one on South Boulevard. Oh, that's the one I, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one on South Boulevard? No, it wasn't that one. No, it was the one on Haskell Street. Beulah was on Beulah, Haskell. that was the first one. Oh, okay. Well, where was the Jewish church or something that, that they... That was on South Boulevard. That was on South Boulevard. So right. you came after that? No, before. Before, before that. I, right. came, oh. I came while they were there. At the... At the temple on oh. South Boulevard. Oh, okay. Oh, so that was, that was later then. So he was even before that. Right. It was a long time before. Oh, okay. 49 to 60. Okay. So you were even earlier. Right. Okay. All right. So was it a small congregation? Yeah, it was small. Very small. Very small. But like I said, <coughs> it grew. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said, we uh, got so large on Haskell and we moved on Oakland. Okay. And, uh, we left Oakland to South Boulevard. Okay. We put it there. To Bonneville. Mm -hmm. You know, it was uh, something. I, I used to live in the projects in East Dallas. Frazier Courts is called. And every Saturday morning, I'd look out of my bedroom window and I'd see this couple with their Bibles going to the bus stop. And I'm thinking, where are they going on a Saturday morning with a Bible? Not knowing years later, I would be doing the same thing. And I found out that it was Jimmy and Esther Faith Holly. No way. That was going to the bus stop on Sabbath mornings with the Bible. Wow. How, what a small world. Yes. Thank you for watching Getting to Know You Talk Show with my guests, my parents, Betty and Curtis McGregor.